Hello everyone and welcome to the most important game of the round. Uh, it's round 9 of the FIDHS.com Grand Swiss. Fabiano Caruana versus Salireza Firuja and there's uh, quite a lot uh, uh, on the line here. They are playing for world number 3 spot as Caruana is currently world, world number 3. Uh, Firuja is uh, world number 4 on the live ratings. They're playing for, of course, uh, you know, getting uh, the... the, the uh, best places possible in the tournament, but also for that uh, spot in the candidates tournament. For some reason, I mentioned in the previous video that Fabi has a guaranteed entrance in the candidates tournament because he was the former World Chess Championship challenger. Uh, well, that's uh, true. It's not true for the uh, upcoming candidates tournament. That's true for the candidates tournament that they just ended. Uh, so what's happening in this candidates tournament is that we will have, of course, the loser of the Magnus Carlsen and Yanni Pomnishi match. So either Magnus or Nepo gets um, a free entrance into the candidates tournament. We have uh, Young Shishtov Duda and Sergei Karyakin from the FIDE World Cup. Uh, Temur Rajabov, he's the uh, FIDE wild card because, well, he had uh, he uh, stepped back from the previous candidates tournament so uh, MVL could play. He didn't want to, well, you guys know what happened and we will have uh, two of the players from this here tournament followed by two more players uh, from the 2022 FIDE Grand Prix. So those will be the eight that will be playing. Uh, so Fabi does not have a guaranteed entrance. Fabi is fighting here for uh, an entrance to uh, to the candidates tournament. So let's check it out uh, and see what happened here. It's quite an enjoyable game. Uh, so Fabi with the white pieces opens with E4 and uh, Firu Firuja now uh, goes for C6. He goes for the Karo Khan defense. Uh, we have D4, D5, and now E5. So, uh, Corona uh, going for the same strategy as um, uh, 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 Firuja had a few few rounds ago. Uh, he played this against, I believe... Um, uh, let me just check real quickly. I don't want to deceive you. Uh, he played this in round... Uh, yeah, I believe round 6 against Shirov. Yeah, he had it against uh, Alexei Shirov. Uh, and they, they went pretty much for the same line. Bishop to f5, uh, we have h4 now, and now uh, h5, not allowing any further expansion with g4. Uh, and now bishop to d3, offering a trade of dark square bishops, uh, of uh, light square bishops. We have bishop captures, queen captures, and now queen to a5 check. So everything the same uh, as in the game against Shirov. Uh, knight to d2, and now e6. And here, uh, if you guys uh, have seen that one, knight to f3 was played by Alexei Shirov. Uh, but here we have knight the e2 by Fabi, uh, and now comes knight to e7. As the light square bishops have been eliminated from the board, this f5 square will be ex excellent for uh, Firuja's knight, and also the pawn here on h5 prevents this pawn from kicking away uh, the knight with uh, pawn to g4. Uh, and here there are a couple of moves that uh, have been played in this position, like castle, c3 is a known move, but the move Fabi plays has never been played before, uh, and he plays b4. Pawn to b4 already on move 9, and it is as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so what do you do here? Well, grabbing the pawn would be extremely dangerous. Uh, for example, if queen captures on b4, we can play rook b1, challenge the queen, and after the queen moves, now even rook captures on b7. And it really wasn't worth it. And now, especially if you capture on a2, then you're really in trouble. Bishop to a3 really puts pressure on black's position, but also it kind of traps the queen here, so the queen has no squares uh, of uh, retreating. And after something like knight to d7, we're going to play knight to c1, uh, attack the uh, black queen here and that's pretty much all there is if uh, queen to a1 we're gonna castle here and now basically your only idea is knight to f5 you want to pick up this bishop here but we're just gonna play bishop captures on f8 and now if uh, this is captured now comes knight c to b3 uh, attacking the queen and after queen to a3 uh, even rook captures uh, on d7 and that's it black resigns here for example if captures knight c5 check picks up the queen so just one line to show you how uh, poisonous this uh, b for pawn is. So of course um, Alireza does not grab it. He plays queen to a6, offers a queen trade, but uh, Fabi doesn't really gain all that much from this trade as he would simply help uh, Alireza develop. So here queen to b3 and now knight to f5. So the knight uh, gets to this very nice square. We have knight to f3. Now the d4 pawn is uh, sufficiently defended uh, and you can uh, continue developing but for the moment white can't really castle because that queen is still attacking the knight on e2 so here knight d7 uh, and a4 and here uh, even though b5 is not a threat uh, just yet 
uh, since the well nothing has been connected if you play we can simply capture it the rook would be hanging on a1 uh, alireza goes for queen to c4 now offers a queen trade here we have bishop to d2 uh, you could trade queens here uh, if fabi trades queens yes he can double uh, alireza's pawns here but um, it's still a very very difficult uh, position and probably something alireza prepared for example if you play uh, pawn to c3 then a5 is very strong for black just going after that b4 pawn so you'd have to play something like bishop to d2 and then well some like knight to b6 and if a5 knight to d5 and black would be very happy with this position uh so instead after queen to c4 we have bishop to d2 like we said and now queen captures on b3 c captures on b3 and now alireza plays f6 uh challenging this e5 pawn because that's pretty much the only breakthrough in the position black can go for at the moment uh since the c5 square is very nicely covered by white here and uh, the situation on the clock is very interesting here fabi is uh, well, some one hour and 20 minutes on the clock, so he spent maybe 10 minutes. Uh, Alireza is down to 43 minutes um, uh, already, uh, and it's only move 15. We have to reach move 40 to gain additional time. So here we have castles, uh, and now bishop to e7. Uh, we have g3, now defending this pawn, so now the knight can move, and the king to f7 by uh, Alireza. We have rook f to e1, and now uh, f captures on e5. And this is a very interesting capture. You might also continue with something like rook a to g8, then maybe something like uh, g5 would be very interesting. Uh, but the just capturing... Uh, uh, for, for the sake of captures, we we often say that uh, that's not very good. Uh, and especially here, because F captures on E5, D captures on E5, and uh, now Alireza started thinking. So, But, but I've seen this uh, many, many times. You know, you just capture a pawn uh, because you know you want that pawn uh, off the board, and then you start thinking for like half an hour. I, I've done this in classical games uh, as well. Uh, so nothing, uh, you know, weird happening here. That's just how pl uh, chess players um, uh, do things. Uh, so here we have Rook A to C. Now, further preparing this c5 push, and uh, it's very interesting. Now it's uh, 25 minutes for Alireza and Fabi well over one hour. Uh, and he immediately plays knight to f4. Uh, it's a very important move because now uh, you're really asking black, what do you do? Uh, the problem is um, black uh, would, would want to play something like uh, rook to c7, maybe double up on the c file, maybe push um, uh, c5 there. But for the moment, uh, this uh, knight very nicely controls this uh, h5 pawn. So here we might see something like rook to c7 and if rook a to c1, g6 defending this pawn, now for example king g2, rook h to c8. So this is how black um, could and maybe even should play this. But Alireza uh, plays a very very uh, active and different line. He plays d4. Uh, now uh, c5 is coming next he's abandoning this uh, plan of rook to c7 followed by rook to c8 and now we have rook a to c1 by fabi uh, also possible and very interesting is just a5 here uh, because now if for example c5 you can play b5 and if a6 b6 uh, and you really have something going on here for example if c4 we can play captures captures and now rook a to c1 and white is better here because of the uh, undefended pawn on h5 you can't play rook a h to c8 because then you will lose the pawn at some point and uh, you can't really defend the rook you can't really move the rook away from the c file and allow something like rook to c7 so it'd be uh your, your best move is just to give up the pawn here rook h to c8 we capture on c4 captures and then just the knight captures on, on on h5 so that's something to consider but okay uh, we have rook a to c1 fabi is playing incredibly fast here he also doesn't want uh, alireza to um, uh, think for free on, on fabi's time uh, and now just c5. Again, uh, here Alireza spent a lot of time for this uh, c5 move as uh, he had uh, a very important move to consider. So after pawn to c5, we did not see b captures on c5 like one might expect, but uh, we actually saw... Uh, uh, knight to knight to d5 and this is very interesting here uh knight to d5 is played by fabi and he played it uh, fairly quickly because uh alireza is down already to some seven minutes and 40 seconds on the clock uh, so uh, what do you do here? Uh, can you capture this knight? Well, not really. If you play e captures on d5, it's basically game over. Then e6 check comes, uh, you play king e8, we uh, win the piece back, king captures on d7, and now knight to e5 check, and uh, black is just terrible here. Uh, the problem is if you go something like king to d8, then we can play knight to f7 check and win some material, and if you play king to e8, uh, it's not much better. We're gonna play knight to g6, attack the rook and the bishop here, 
and if something like rook to h7 trying to preserve preserve material even bishop g5 put more pressure on the bishop on e7 and if something like rook to c7 defending we can easily capture and after knight captures even rook captures on c5 because if the rook moves we first capture on e7 with check and then we uh, recollect here and if something like rook to d7 you can even get checkmated king to f7 uh rook to f8 check and now after king captures on g6 even rook to e6 check uh, checkmate so uh you know it, it doesn't uh, work out very well for you if, if you go for this uh, line after knight to d5 so the knight can't really be captured uh you could consider something like uh well maybe king to g6 is very interesting uh, king to g6 is particularly very interesting uh, because now well, you don't really have a good um, idea of what to do with uh, uh, with this knight here because now this is a threat and you would probably have to go back and we repeat king to f7 so maybe if uh, something like this happened then Fabi would just go for uh, b captures on c5 and continue playing this so maybe he was just testing alireza with uh, knight to d5 uh, but either way after knight to d5 alireza just played c captures on b4 and now uh, what uh, what's happening here well uh, we have king to g6 uh, sorry uh, we have first uh, knight captures on e7 knight captures on e7 and now comes knight to g5 with check uh you have to really figure out what to do here you could capture on b4 you could play knight to g5 check capturing on d4 uh, is never really an option because if you capture on d4 then a5 cements this pawn on b4 and this is this is now okay for black so your real question is whether to capture on b4 or to go for this knight to g5 check uh, capturing on b4 is very very interesting uh, so we're gonna explore this uh, just a little bit as this is a classical game and when fabi is playing you have really a lot to uh, discover the point is after uh, this bishop captures on b4 and knight to d5 we play bishop to b6 a uh, bishop to d6 and now we keep control of the e7 square and the f6 square and now knight to g5 remains a threat for example if rook to c3 we're gonna play knight g5 check king to g6 and we're gonna capture on e6 and now after let's say rook h to c8 doubling up here we're gonna play rook c to d1 put pressure on this pawn and after black defends it we're gonna play rook to d2 now double up on the d file rook captures on b3 rook e to d1 and this would be very very good for white if uh, for example the the other rook comes uh, and uh, helps out with the defense of the pawn we can even play knight to d4 uh, and now chase away this rook next we can play knight to b5 it would be impossible to to defend this with black uh, so after bishop captures on b4 uh, very good things uh, could happen but uh, instead of this Fabi went for the immediate knight to g5 check and it's a little bit different king to g6 now comes rook captures on c8 he wants to get rid of uh, a pair of rooks off the board rook captures and now knight captures on e6 and now uh, what do you play here uh, well uh, in the game knight to c6 was played which is a very very important you want to gu guard your pawns here uh, but um uh other than that you you really don't have a better, better move maybe a5 but then the d4 pawn hangs so knight to c6 really takes care of both of these ideas uh but now we have f4 by fabi uh and the really cool thing is that uh alireza is down to some six and a half minutes on the clock so here you also possible is knight to f4 for example if king to f5 we could even capture on h5 uh, but now you lose the uh, the e5 pawn so maybe uh, fabi's f4 uh does uh, you know uh have a bit more punch to it so king to f5 now by alireza sacrificing the g7 pawn and this is uh, a really really uh, awesome maneuver by uh, alireza uh, as it uh, really improves the activity of his king so here we have knight captures on g7 check and now he goes back king to g6 you do not want to uh, go in with something like king to g4 then king g2 and your king uh, will not have a will not have a good time here uh, it's just a really really terrible position for your king you're gonna play f5 we're gonna play rook to e4 and that's it uh so of course the king has to go back king to g6 and now we have knight back to e6 uh alireza repeats king to f5 uh and now uh if fabi goes knight to g7 check again then we probably see some sort of a repetition here uh but fabi wants to play for the win and he plays knight to g5 but this also activates uh, alireza's uh, pieces as now knight to c5 so the idea behind the g7 points 
sacrifice uh, was to get away, uh, get this knight uh, away from the e6 square. So the c5 square is vacated for the black knight. Uh, and uh, it's really interesting because uh, Alireza thought of all of this with some three minutes on the clock. So here we have knight to f7. Now Fabi wants to play knight d6 check and pick up the rook on c8. So king to e6 and now knight to d6. Again, attacking the rook. Uh, rook to g8, now going for this pawn on g3. Uh, and now king to g2, just uh, defending this pawn. Uh, also very interesting here is just f5 check. If you want to throw that in before, uh, for example, king d5 and bishop to f4, you could also defend it like this. But uh, like I said, Alireza is uh, below three minutes on the clock and Fabi does not want to uh, give him any time to, to think about the position. So king g2 and now only now king to d5. Uh, if you're wondering why not knight capture some b3, uh, well, it's a little bit dangerous uh, as this king is still here. Here, this just gives um, uh, white uh, free tempi to push those pawns. F5 check, king d5, and now uh, even knight to e4. So really a, a crazy position here. And after something like rook to f8, we can go knight to f6 check, king to c4, and even bishop to h6, uh, just uh, getting that uh, rook away from there. And now we're going to start pushing these pawns. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, very, very hard to stop them. So Alireza plays king to d5 first. Now, of course, this is impossible because the e5 pawn would just fall. Uh, so here we have uh, rook to b1. And now the pawn is defended and now knight to e4. Uh, attacking the bishop here. Uh, so knight captures on e4, king captures on e4 and rook to c1 now. So Alireza made incredible progress with his king here. Uh, and he's ready to, to push for more than a draw here. We have king to d3 attacking the bishop and uh, we have bishop to e1 and now even king to e2 so uh, it's very dangerous as this pawn is now uh, ready to be pushed uh, forward we have e6 fabi pushes his own pawn uh, as that's the only way to, to counter this position and now d3 uh, and now the situation on the clock is fabi has some eight minutes uh, whereas alireza has about 20 seconds on the clock uh, and it's uh, move 37 so three more moves need to be made uh, in order to uh, reach time control so here we have f5 uh, defending this pawn now of course we want to play f6 f7 and so on uh, and and um, uh, now the problem is uh, you really have to play a perfect move uh, in order to uh, in order to play this. Uh, the problem is if you play d2, white happily sacrifices the bishop and after this even picks up the knight and then b captures on c6. We're going to play f6 and the pawns are now unstoppable. Whatever you play doesn't really matter. f7 here we're going to push this and then we bring a queen into the game. So that's not the way to make progress here. Another uh, one way to make progress here is rook to e8 but uh, uh, you know, with few seconds on the clock, this move is incredibly difficult to spot. Uh, Alireza made this move with some seven seconds left on the clock. He played knight to d4, and it seems like it's an incredibly dangerous move because uh, you go after the f5 pawn, and you can't push this because then you lose this pawn. Uh, but now the position is actually uh, winning for Fabi, or if not winning, uh, even, uh, you know, uh, really, really close to winning. It would be, have to be like maybe perfect defense in order for it not to be winning. Uh, so feel free to to pause the video here and try to find this move for an incredible move for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on uh, figuring out that if the bishop was not on this square, rook to e1 would be checkmate. So, the, you know, taking that into consideration, of course, you guys found bishop captures on d4 and congratulations on that. Uh, so now you know that, of course, the pawn is never really a target because rook to e1 is checkmate. So, of course, we cannot play that. Uh, Fabi grabbed the b4 pawn and now Alireza has to figure out something else to play. And he has, uh, you know, very, very little time to do so. So d2 was played. Uh, and now, of course, bishop captures on d2. Fabi sacrifices his bishop. King captures on d2. And uh, here it's move 40. We reach time control and players are given additional time so now uh, you can rest a little bit but you still have to be incredibly precise now you have to decide between rook to f1 and rook to c5 how do you defend this pawn uh, well rook to f1 is okay but rook to c5 is better because uh, well you could also bring the rook to e5 and then you really control those pawns and this is what Fabi plays uh, so now can you capture on b3 not really if you capture on b3 then you have rook to d5 check and after king to c3 just f6 
and if knight to d4, uh, f7, of course, rook f8, uh, e7, and it's game over. So uh, uh, Alireza goes rook to e8, that uh, move that had uh, to be played before knight to d4, uh, but there simply wasn't time for it. So rook to e5, uh, and now... Uh, again, an excellent, excellent position because uh, how do you uh, proceed here with, with black? You're up a piece, but there is, doesn't seem to be anything you can do. If you go knight to c6, challenge the rook, uh, we can even play rook to d5 check, and after king to e2, just b4. We know that the knight can never move so far away because the pawns are just winning. Uh, so, for example, a6, but we're just going to kick away the knight. Captures, captures, and after knight to e7, rook e5 check, king to d3, and now f6. Uh, if knight to g6, we can play even f7, and uh, you know it's perfectly fine. If rook to e7, we, we can capture on h5, and if rook captures on e6, we can play rook to d5 check, king to c4, and now uh, even h5. Just take away uh, this knight from uh, controlling the f8 square, and if knight f8, of course, even rook to d8. So uh, completely winning for white. So knight to c6 does not work. Uh, king to d3 uh, is what Alireza played, and now we have king to f2. Uh, this is again very very important. Uh, if you wanna, uh, uh, you know, uh, play play it precisely. If you over push it with something like uh, pawn to e7, then this is very dangerous. Knight to c6, rook to d5, check king e4, and now if f6, uh, we can even play knight captures on e7. Uh, so that's uh, that's basically the idea. And here white would have to go for something like rook to d1 to try rook to e1 check, uh, but now just king f5. And after f captures, rook captures, we would have this position where uh, white is up a pawn, but still with a, with a much better uh, position. Uh, so this is what happens if e7 is pushed. But here king to f2 was played, and now uh, Fabi just goes uh, for the uh, very nice uh, rook to e... Uh, sorry, Alireza goes for rook to e7. Uh, and... Uh, uh, how do you proceed here? Well, now it's much, much different. Now g4 can be played. Uh, g4, when when the king was still on the g file, could be uh, a bit dangerous. But now we have h captures on g4, king to g3, and now uh, you can't really go for uh, knight captures on f5 here, rook captures and rook captures on e6, because rook f7 and uh, white's, white's position is simply much, much better. If a6, we're going to capture on b7, there, there's just no playing this. So after king g3, we have rook back to e8, now king captures on g4. We have knight to c6 attacking Fabi's rook here. King to f4, beautiful move. Fabi even says, okay, you're welcome to capture my rook because then the pawns will be unstoppable. Uh, so Alireza goes knight to e7, but now just f6, uh, even allowing this fork because uh, Fabi no longer cares about his rook. Knight to uh, g6 check. King to f5, and now, of course, we already mentioned that you cannot go for this, so knight captures on h4 check was played. King g5, now knight to f3 check. This is, uh, you know, uh, the, the maximum number of forks uh, you could have in a chess game. Uh, and now after king to f4, we have knight to d4. Of course, uh, the, the rook is still off limits. So knight to d4, and now we have e7. Now, of course, f7 is coming. So knight to c6, but now uh, even f7. So the rook again being offered, but there's no point in playing this. Uh, Firuja did not uh, resign here. He even played rook captures on e7 because it seems like there's a trick in the position, but there really isn't. Uh, the trick in the position is if, uh, for example, rook captures on e7 is played, then we can play knight captures on e7, and if f8 queen, then knight to g6 check uh, wins back the queen, and maybe black is winning. The problem is, after this, we can just play king to g5, and uh, there's no more uh, forking with the knight, just f8 queen will win the game. Uh, but Fabi didn't want to mess around after rook captures on e7, he just played rook to d5 check, and he was in this position on move 54 that uh, Alireza Firuja resigned the game, uh, and uh, a very, very nice victory for Fabiano Coruana, who takes down the leader and... Uh, uh, well, delivers uh, Firuja's uh, first loss of the tournament. So now, after nine rounds, there are two more rounds to go, as there are 11 rounds in total, and we have a three-way tie uh, at the top. It's uh, Firuja, uh, Fabiano Corona, and David Howell, all, all, all three on six and a half points. Uh, so we'll see what happens in the in the next two rounds. We're gonna uh, uh, cover one of David's uh, uh, games as well, as he he's doing incredibly well. He he won his four uh, last games in a row, so that's incredibly incredibly impressive. Uh, so yeah, uh, tough break for Alireza. It seemed like he was just gonna steamroll the entire tournament, but uh, yeah, Fabi is a very very uh, tough nut to crack, as uh, as you've seen. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, sorry about, again, being a bit of a longer video, but that's uh, how it usually is when Fabi is playing. Um, 
so sorry about that. Uh, I, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Chess Hasi. Uh, I would like to uh, wish a very happy birthday to Per Porcel and a very happy birthday to Busca. Uh, hope you guys uh, spent your days uh, very, very well with uh, lots of friends and, uh, you know, many chess games. And I would like to thank Tom Darrell and Mohamed Alif for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this uh, incredible event. Checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.